Today we are going to see the comparison in between the prokaryotic and mitochondrial electron transport chain. So you know that when the process of glycolysis or citric acid cycle takes place, you will get an intermediate and that intermediate is usually in the form of NADH and FADH2. So this NADH and FADH2 then transfers the proton and electrons to trans electron transport chain to produce additional ATPs by oxidative phosphorylation. So as mentioned above, you will see that in the aerobic respiration, the uh, coupled oxidation reduction reactions usually transfers the electrons from one complex to the another complex in the uh, electron transport chain. So yesterday and day before yesterday, we have seen what are the complexes in the bacterial electron transport chain. And uh, yesterday we have seen the complexes uh, in the mit mitochondrial electron transport chain. So I thought, um, I hope you have understood those complexes. Now, usually the how the electron transfer takes place, electrons that is uh, the dif diffusible electron carriers which are NADH and FADH2, they carry the hydrogen atoms means it is the protons and the electrons. So, these proton, uh, protons, they are in present inside the cytoplasm of the bacterial cell and the mitochondrial matrix in the mitochondria of eukaryotic cell. So, since the uh, protons and electrons from substrates like NADH and uh, FADH2, they are transferring the electrons to the next level of uh, uh, the electron acceptors, usually uh, since it is a exergonic pathway, heat energy, uh, sorry, uh, energy is released and this energy released usually is then uh, taken up, uh, this energy is uh, usually released and the electrons are passed on from uh, one carrier molecule to the another carrier molecule. So, you know that membrane associated uh, electron carriers like flavoproteins, then ion sulfur proteins or ion sulfur uh, uh, that is uh, centers, then quinones, then cytochrome C, cytochrome C1, cytochrome A, A3 uh, in the mit uh, mitochondria and you have many uh, more complexes uh, or the electron acceptors. But the last electron acceptor in the elect uh, in the uh, ox uh, that is uh, aerobic uh, respiration process is the oxygen and this oxygen is then reduced to water molecule. So, if you observe the energy release from electron transport system, you will see that the as the electrons pass from carrier to carrier through a series of oxidation reactions, uh, uh, reduction reactions, usually with the transfer of uh, electron, some of the energy is released. So, this uh, energy, this is your energy level in the increased level. Now, what happens when this reduced carrier is uh, uh, donating its electron, it becomes oxidized. Then when it is uh, uh, donating the electron to the next one, it is releasing the another one. Uh, uh, energy is released and the electron is passed from the second to the third one. It gets oxidized and it is uh, transferring electron to the third carrier. Then again, when from the third carrier to the fourth carrier, then it becomes oxidized form and this becomes reduced. So, in this way, you will observe that the energy is being released out. Uh, so, in the chemiosmotic theory, uh, it explains the electron transport chain, how it functions. So, according to this theory, transfer of electrons down the electron transport chain through a series of oxidation reduction, uh, reduction reaction, it releases the energy and this energy allows certain carriers 
in the chain to transfer the protons across the membrane. So, the energy being released here, the energy being released here is used for moving out the protons from inside of the matrix, from inside of the uh, matrix of mitochondria to the outer intermembrane space or in bacterial cell from the cytoplasm of the bacterial cell to outside the cytoplasmic membrane ok. So, this is how the protons are moving. Uh, then depending on the type of the cell electron transport chain may be found in the cytoplasmic membrane. So, in bacteria the all the components of the electron transport chain are embedded in the cytoplasmic membrane and when you uh, observe a mitochondria the inner membrane of mitochondria is uh, having the embedded electron transport carrier molecules or the components of the electron transport chain. So, in prokaryotes the protons are transported from the cytoplasm of the bacterium across the cytoplasmic membrane to the periplasmic space from cytoplasmic membrane to the periplasmic space where the protons are trans, uh, transported the protons are transported from the cytoplasm of the bacterial cell across the cytoplasmic means it is uh, uh, crossing the barrier of cytoplasmic membrane in the cytoplasmic membrane you have the electron transport components and it is transporting the protons to the periplasmic space which is located in between the cell wall and the cytoplasmic membrane ok. So, outer layer of the bacterial cell is the cell wall then you have the cytoplasmic membrane. So, in the cytoplasmic membrane you have the embedded uh, components of a uh, electron transport chain. So, the space in between the cell wall and the cytoplasmic membrane is called as the periplasmic space. So, protons are transported into the periplasmic space, but in eukaryotic cell protons are transported from the uh, matrix of the mitochondria across the inner mitochondrial membrane uh, to the intermembrane space. So, here you, it will be clear this is your inner mitochondrial membrane and this is your cristae and this is your outer membrane. So, in between the outer mitochondrial membrane and inner mitochondrial membrane this space is called as inter uh, intermembrane space or intermembrane uh, uh, space and the protons from the matrix region of the mitochondria is transported outside the uh, outside of the inner membrane into the uh, intermembrane space ok got it clear. Now, because of the accumulation of protons within the intermembrane space of mitochondria what it does it creates a proton gradient. So, he, here you know that now the protons are excess in the intermembrane space or in the periplasmic space of the bacterial cell because of this it creates a electrochemical gradient. It creates electrochemical gradient and because of the electrochemical gradient or potential difference or difference in the voltage what happens the uh, inside of the matrix or the cytoplasm you will have a negative charge and outside of the uh, inner membrane or that is the in the inter uh, intermembrane space or in the periplasmic space you will have a positive charge understood positive charge is because of the protons. So, protons are carrying positive charge. So, here you have a positive charge and in the inside you will have a negative charge understood. So, now because of this what happens because of proton gradient. Now, these are the components which is embedded here it is moving or transporting the proton from inside to the outside ok. And this is your ATP synthase enzyme that is F0F1 uh, that you call it as the stock and the base. So, since it is having a positive charge on in the intermembrane space or the periplasmic space, uh, here you have a positive charge and here you have a, a electrochemically negative charge. This promotes or this induces the ATP synthesis by moving by starting the uh, rotor of the F0. So, this F0 is sta uh, starts moving because of the proton motive force 
when the protons are entering inside. So this is your rotor that is F0 rotor and uh, this F0 domain or the rotor is rotating. It is made up of 9 subunits. Okay. Uh, and uh, this is acting like a st uh, stator. So with, which is joining the uh, F1 uh, domain or the catalytic domain. So this particular when the proton is moving from uh, electrochemically positive uh, uh, po po electrochemically positive charged uh, charged area or the intermembrane space or periplasmic uh, space into the matrix uh, of mitochondria or the cytoplasm of the bacterial cell then it uh, it catalyzes the synthesis of atp by uh, phosphorylating the adp molecule so this is how the uh, comparison in between the bacterial cell and mitochondrial uh, ETC takes place. So, what is chemiosmotic theory? Chemiosmotic theory explains the functioning of electron transport chain. So, according to this uh, theory, the transfer of electrons down the electron transport system through a series of oxidation reduction reduc uh, reactions, it releases energy. This energy allows certain carriers in the chain to transport hydrogen ions across the membrane as I have said. So, it is transporting the protons outside the membrane. Okay. So, because of this it is creating an electrochemical gradient or potential difference and uh, the fluid uh, on the uh, side of the membrane where the protons accumulate acquires a positive charge and inside of the cytoplasm and the matrix there is a negative charge. So, this energized state of the membrane as a result of this charge separator separation it is called as a proton motive force and this proton motive force then provides energy necessary for the enzyme called ATP synthase. So, this is located in the membrane to catalyze the synthesis of ATP from ADP and phosphate. So, generation of ATP occurs as the proton cross the membrane through the ATP uh, synthase and re-enter either the bacterial cytoplasm or the matrix of the mitochondria. So, as the proton moves down the concentration gradient through the ATP synthase, the energy release causes the rotor and the rod of ATP synthase to rotate. Already I have explained that is the FO domain starts rotating. The mechanical energy from this rotation is then converted into chemical en uh, energy as phosphate is added to ADP to form the ATP molecule. So, the proton motive force provides energy necessary for the enzyme uh, and where the mechanical energy from this rotation converts chemical energy. So, it has uh, double paste ho gaya wo. So, this is how the ATP synthase, so protons are moving inside, uh, this is rotating the FO domain and because of this proton motive force, this particular energy is then um, catalyzing the uh, formation of ADP, uh, ATP from ADP and the uh, phosphate group. So, in an electron transport uh, system, energy from electron trans uh, transfer during uh, oxidation or reduction certain carriers double double oh yeah. okay so usually what happens uh, here hmm. so from uh, complex 1 the protons are moving out from complex 3 the protons are moving and uh, out and from complex 4 the protons are moving out then here it creates a electrochemical positive charge and because of uh, that here you have a um, uh, negative charge, electrochemical negative charge. So, this drives the uh, movement of proton into the ATP phase and because of this what happens, because of the proton motive force, the rotor uh, rotates and it uh, uh, catalyzes the conversion of ATP from ADP and phosphate group. So, this is how the uh, this is how the uh, oxidative phosphorylation involving electron transport system and chemiosmosis is taking place when the electrons are flowing from NADH and FADH2 uh, which carries the protons and the electrons and uh, transport or transfers electron to the uh, level of next level of complexes 
that is complex 1, complex 2, complex 3 and complex 4 both which are present in the bacterial cell and the mitochondrial mitochondria and uh, when they are doing so when transfer of electron is uh, usually done the energy is released and because of the energy release the proton from the inside is transported outside and because of which the electrochemical gradient or proton gradient is made or electrochemical potential is there gradient is made which allows the chemiosmosis process and in this chemiosmosis process the ATP synthase enzyme uh, usually uh, under, undergo the synthesis of ATP from ADP and phosphate. So, at the end of electron transport system two protons, two electrons and half of an oxygen combines to water. Since oxygen is the final electron acceptor the process is called as aerobic respiration. So, therefore, this process is referred as aerobic phosphorylation process. In anaerobic respiration what happens oxygen is not the electron acceptor here nitrite or ammonia or hydrogen or hydrogen sulphide is the uh, electron acceptor which we will be seeing in the third unit. So, here we will stop now and uh, tomorrow or if uh, there is no light then we will uh, see on uh, next day. So, we will start with the third unit. Okay. Thank you.